Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. person who watches this video to not only click the like button click the subscribe button if you aren't already subscribed share the video donate and challenge five of your friends to donate too if they don't know and aren't familiar and need updates send them to the odyssey project site at the odyssey project uh 21.top and let them look at the work that we've done over the past 20 years let, let them look at the work we're doing now in the areas of mental health and in uh, supporting and housing uh, domestic abuse victims and uh, properly socializing young black males so that we can create a more stronger and functional black male population uh, in, in, in so many different ways. We've been doing this, uh, our research arm, which leads to these programs we develop, uh, is strong. I've been leading and heading it now for over 20 something years. We, I personally have almost 80,000 hours of research just in studying the black enigma. Uh, and I'm not doing it so I can ride around and lecture and get paid. I actually do it so that I can understand the problem, come up with solutions, create programs, create interventions and everything else that's necessary. That comes at a cost, that comes at a price. You know, uh, for everything I share on here, it took hours and hours and hours of investing my time, energy, effort to not only learn about it, but then to find out if my ideas about how to fix things would work. So I have to actually get in there and say, man, I know in my mind it should work, but does it really work? And all these different things come at a price, so I'm challenging you. Now, again, like I said, I'm not going to be long here. A couple of things have come across my desk and people have asked me to speak on it and I've kind of sit there. Uh, because I'm really tired of all the celebrity stuff, but uh, sometimes there's something to speak on. And anytime I talk about a celebrity of, in, uh, in any way, I am looking for a, a teachable moment. And I, I think there's a teachable moment here. Well, I know it's a teachable moment. I know because it's something I'm passionate about. And it's a couple of things. It's not one thing, so I'm not going to focus on any one person. I want to talk about a couple of things. Uh, the most hottest topic is Eric Holder Jr., uh, the gang member who is responsible for killing uh, Nipsey Hussle was sentenced to a total of 60 years today. Um, and I'm gonna talk about why that matters to me. Um, also, someone sent me um, an article about Maya Angelou's family selling her Harlem, uh, uh, her Harlem home. Um, in the midst of the gentrification of Harlem. Um, there was another uh, article some weeks ago where the family uh, of the, 
of this beachfront property in California whose ancestors had it taken from them by eminent domain, had it given back and then they turned around and actually sold it back to uh, the city. I wanna say it, 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 it's somewhere in Southern California, I can't remember now. And one of the things that happens with us a lot is we get caught up in the outcomes. And I've been talking about this a lot. I've been talking about it with my clients. I've been talking about it uh, in lectures. I've been talking about it in mental health conferences. I've done three mental health conferences in the past four weeks. I'll be sitting in on another uh, conference in April, at least. Uh, I don't have, I think I'll have the one in April. I have to look at the calendar because my sister may have put um, something else on there uh, that's tied to the business. But here, here, here's the thing. One of the things that I talk about a lot is we don't ask the right questions. We lament on outcomes. We lament on results. We lament on what we see the end result being. We don't ask the question of how did we get here? We don't ask the question question are we doing the right thing to combat it? We love to complain about the violence of black men, the criminality of black men, domestic violence, and the partner violence. But are we confronting it? Where is it coming from? Are black men simply born more violent than anybody else? No, there's no scientific data that supports that particular position. Then that means situation, circumstances, and development is leading to the hostility, the proclivity towards violence, and I've written on this substantially. Uh, one of the reasons I created Black Men Lead because of the fact that, uh, because of the fact that effective and proper racial socialization reduces the proclivity towards violence. The risk of committing violence, violent acts, uh, dissipates drastically when uh, young Black males are properly. Uh, socialized. So then, that's that. Then you know what happens in the in in the instance of Maya Angelou's family selling her brownstone. It's because again we don't understand how things work and we don't ask the right questions. We those who understand that that probably wasn't the best move long term. That there was value in that home beyond what could be expressed in a dollar amount, and even in the dollar amount. The exchange of property for a fiat currency is not a good thing right now. If you don't have something you're going to immediately put that money in that you're selling that property for, it's probably not a good deal. But you have to understand that. And you have to ask the question, why are we doing things? Why, why would you go years and years and fight over land that was taken from your family? Beachfront property in an extremely upscale and increasingly in a, in a, in a, uh, in a, in a uh, environment and community where the property values are currently uh, increasing at a rapid rate, you turn around and sell the property back to them after they give it to you. Now, the thing is, this is a crazy thing. Here's the crazy thing. The crazy thing is when you really ask the right question, it becomes even more ridiculous that they did it. Okay, so in essence... If it was really a simple thing of we want to buy the property, they could have just said, okay, we're going to compensate you. However many million they end up selling the property back to uh, the city for, the city could have just said, look, we're going to compensate you for what we took from your parents 21 million. Why was the property given back and then purchased back? Because it sends a message out that we, we gave it to them and they sold it back to us. And so it, 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 it gives an image like we did the right thing. It gives an image that they don't know what to do. So it ain't our fault. We gave it back to them. They held the deed to the property because that's a difference. I can sit up and say, I'm gonna compensate you for something I took, but you still took it. You still have it. And you have definitely benefited from it financially and will continue to benefit it from benefit from it financially. And I'm pretty sure what you're giving me is nowhere close to what the property is gonna ultimately be worth to you. So you still win. But what do they do? They turn around and give it to you. Then put more money in front of you than you've seen before. And you jump on it without realizing that holding that property had far more power for more overall long-term wealth in it. And why? Because we don't understand how things work. 
because we don't give attention to it. Now, with this Eric Holder thing and killing Nipsey, something that I think that we really truly need to stop overlooking is mental health. Now, I don't know how true it is, but being that it's a major issue in the black community that is currently unaddressed, you have to actually give uh, a level of validity or credibility to it. Uh, it was presented in the statements when they were going through the, sentence, uh, the sentencing phase that he suffered from schizophrenia, that he was diagnosed with, with schizophrenia uh, as early as 19 and that he had as recently as two weeks before killing Nipsey had a major manic episode where he threw a brick through a window because he thought somebody was trying to kill him. Now, does that eliminate the fact that he killed Nipsey but if you are suffering from schizophrenia you're having uh, manic episodes you are having illusions um, you're hearing voices all of these things but then you are in an environment where no one takes that serious no one is going to actually provide you the space you need to get the type of attention you need and you're going to still be judged for everything that you do as if nothing's wrong with you this is a real true issue, and I've been talking about it for a while. And it's one of the most unaddressed issues. That along with incest in the black community are things we don't want to talk about. We don't want to touch it. We don't want to touch incest. We don't want to touch um, mental, mental illness. We don't want to talk about it. We want to pretend. We have got this mindset that if we don't talk about it, it doesn't exist, and people are dying. If we don't talk about it, it doesn't exist. People are, are being put away senselessly and unnecessarily in institutions because they aren't getting the proper care, attention, and intervention they need in order to be able to sustain a healthy lifestyle. That's on us. People are constantly talking about what we want. There was a big back and forth with me and someone, a young brother who watched it and I went off because he came at me sideways and so I, I let him, I gave him the business. I One thing, you can disagree with me. You, you don't have to agree with me. You can tell me I'm wrong. You can tell me 50 million ways I'm wrong and you're not going to get anything from me. If people notice I don't show up and do a whole lot of engagement because I'm not trying to prove anything. I've done my work. I've put in my work. You want to go spend hours and hours and hours gathering data to evaluate the uh, data that I've uh, either produced myself in my own research or reviewed in, in other research and all of the things I've come to, go right ahead and you can do that. If not, it's just your feelings versus my constant work and examination of but but my thing is i'm not going to argue with you about it i'm not going to sit up and try to prove myself i proved myself with 30 years of being on this game in this game consistently every day showing up putting in work most of the time on my dime on my dollar and serving people who who, who are in in some of the most uh darkest of places and i will continue to do that but here's the thing when uh, the brother showed up, he came in beside me, and the whole thing was he misunderstood me saying stop asking for handouts as me saying stop asking for reparations. I wasn't talking about reparations. I was talking about a mindset of getting something for free. I don't think reparations are free. I think reparations are owed to us. I think that our ancestors have earned every dime that we're demanding in reparations. So that's not a handout. Now they try to sell it as handout, but it's not a handout. And so that was a misunderstanding overall, but the way he came at me, and he, I, I, I came at him pretty rough. But here's the thing, in a situation, in my understanding, in my research and looking at where we're at, if we were to in some way be paid out reparations, whether in property, in stock, in bonds, whatever, we're paid reparations uh, in the way of what is estimated somewhere around now 14.4 to 15 trillion dollars. It could be more than that now. But and, and it's distributed to those who can prove that they are direct descendants of slaves. Okay. Now, here's the first thing. My research tells me that not enough of us are astute enough in managing wealth, 
in generating wealth and creating wealth to know what to do with it. My research tells me that while some are gonna take it and double down on it and literally do what they should be doing with it, a vast majority of them of us are gonna go back and spend it right back into the economy that it came from and it will return to them within 10 years. And I'm being generous. So then, what must we do? We must develop a mindset of doing for ourselves. We must develop a mindset of understanding why things are happening. Uh, we must develop an understanding of uh, how things work and why they are moving and doing and 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 uh, producing the results that we're getting. Why are we getting the results we're getting? Why are we? Why are we? sitting in situations where the wealth gap is wide and why are we sitting in situations where we are literally constantly going in deeper into debt to educate our youth and they aren't being effectively educated why are we sitting up in a situation where mass incarceration is expanding rather than being mitigated um and 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 so many other things that we're seeing ourselves do why is the mental health uh, crisis on the rise? Why are we seeing a spike in black suicide? All of these things have questions to why and the answers are there. But the problem is we we want the sensationalism. We want the oh wow. We literally have become mesmerized by being traumatized. It is there's We act like there's value in being a victim. We act like there's value in being able to point the finger at who did us wrong. And the only value we have is what we can create. And the only way we're gonna ever get the reparations, and I'll be honest with you, and I'm gonna tell you this, you can believe me, you can listen, you don't have to. The only way that we're gonna actually get reparations is that we develop enough power that we have the ability to impact how things function in this country with our dollar. When we do that, then they have to sit up and say, look, it's gonna cost us more not to pay them than it does to pay them, let's pay them. As long as they can sit up and, and give us bull crap about studies and all this other bull crap they need to do before they really talk about it. Y'all done paid everybody else. They did no damn study for the Ukraine, the uh, Japanese internment camps, the uh, Native Americans, and everybody else that done got money didn't have to do no damn study. They got paid. But with us, they keep feeding us that and they keep setting us off because we let them. And we let them because we don't even realize we have power. We're not answering and at, we're not asking and answering the right questions. You know, I'm not saying the brother shouldn't get 60 years. What I'm saying is there's a real problem with mental illness and mental health. And that there are far too many brothers in prison instead of getting the help they need. And that there are other brothers in prison because they didn't get the help they need. There are people dead because people aren't getting the help they need. And we can sit up and talk about, you know, what's right and what's wrong. At the end of the day, if you could have stopped something by doing something, it's it's on you as well. And so my thing is, there there's ways to mitigate uh, the right, the spike in suicides in the black community. We're talking about a 30% increase across the board, regardless of age or race. I mean, age or gender. We're talking about a 49% increase over the last eight years in black males from 14 to 25. We're talking about our young black girls, five to 13, being the number one uh, in the number one uh, position in suicides. And we don't think it's a problem. We don't want to talk about it. We don't want to deal with it. If we don't do something soon, it's going to be almost irreversible. That's where we're at right now. We need to do something. We need to take action. Look, I'm about to get off of here. I got some things I need to do, but I'm challenging everybody. Number one, ask yourself the right questions about what you should be doing. Ask yourself the right questions about what's going on. Ask yourself, can this be sustained at the rate it's going and blacks still have a relevant place in this nation? Ask yourself those questions. And also, I'm gonna challenge you to support the work we do because we're providing the answers. It's that simple. On that note, uh, oh, and in case you don't know how to give, go to the description box. You're going to see all the ways that you can give and support the work we do. Um, we've had a few people volunteering recently. If you want to volunteer, that's always something that can be done. Uh, I'm going to share a person who I'm extremely proud of. 
a, 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 a builder. She's literally a, a, a builder in real estate. She builds homes. Uh, she's opened up a community residential uh, recovery center for young girls. Uh, and so I'm going to be bringing some stuff so you can guys can go support her. And the way she's asking to be supported, you can give money, but she's also asking for clothes and a bunch of other stuff. Because remember, these girls are going to be living there. Uh, man, uh, I'm so happy. And it's something we need, something we've been talking about, not she and I, but we uh, in general in Houston who are actually be boots on the ground. Me, uh, my partner, my mentee, we've been talking about getting places to actually house people. And Tasha Royal has shown up and 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 and, and, and done what she, she she's 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 that person, man. When you come by a person that's doing what she's talking about doing, she's doing it on an unbelievable level, and she's still giving back to the community. She presents tough and everything, but she has a heart of gold. Uh, so we are really, man. We, we're getting out there. So again, I'm on about to, I'm about to get off of here, but we need your support. Man, never mind.